Tuesday night. It is eight o'clock. Do you know where DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. Yes, it's the DJ round table. And it is the fun time with everyone. Uh, we have a couple of DJs out today on assignment, and they'll be back shortly. Of course, we have uh, DJ Brentley, his assistant, always never far away. Uh, and we also have today coming back, returning back to the table, and sorely, sorely missed, and a great guy and a great rocker out in Ohio. And I wish Dwayne was here because he's a fellow Ohioan, uh, a fellow Buckeye. Uh, DJ Billy C. DJ Billy C. Welcome back. Thank and, you, sir. Uh, Appreciate it. I, I do always always miss you, man. Uh, cool thing. He is here, of course. And Matt, all oh. oh, you guys are here, ready to rock and roll tonight and talk about stuff. Billy, I know you have to run in a little while. He has uh, adult things to do and real life things such as work and stuff. So we'll make sure that uh, we get him out of here. But one of the things I need you guys to do, if you're out there, make sure you click the like button, smash the thumbs up, and make sure you follow the channel. Uh, we always got stuff going on. We always have people coming in, and we always got great knowledge here. Uh, Billy is, if you guys don't remember, you've been a while since you've been in the watch show, you haven't watched one of the older shows. He is a sound guy, so he did soundboards for a lot of rock concerts and a lot of uh, pop groups. He also has uh, his own DJ service. He does DMX and specialized lighting for theater. Uh, he has a great well knowledge and background, and now he's a sound, but lighting as well. He really does compliment uh, DJ Salsis on the DMX area, and he knows a lot of tricks that uh, you may have not known that work at uh, rock concerts, but also help in the DJ world as well. And he has a podcast with some uh, some names on there. Some really cool name people on there, including yours truly, but other people on his podcast as well. And uh, DJ Billy, you want to give out your information on your podcast, and where can they find that podcast? Um, so yeah, the uh, podcast is located on Spotify. Uh, it's on a couple other platforms as well. I don't, I don't know off the top of my head, but you can find it on. It's 192, so 192 podcast. You can find it on all platforms, basically. Um, all your listening platforms. Um, yeah, it's just really exciting. Um, it's exploding. Um, I just had DJ Rachel on there. Um, she's wrapping up this month. Um, I got another DJ who is coming on in next month. He's uh, out of Texas. And then I got the following month, I got DJ Rick Webb coming on. Um, then the following month I have DJ Nick Spinelli coming on. Uh, it's, it's exploding more than I think it was going to. I didn't really want to start it back up again, but it's, it's launched and it's, it's, uh, full of, um, if you're looking for more information on how to better equip your business or, um, more tips and tricks, um, maybe on different things on how to run your business, how to, have your setup keen or what, you know, beginner setups, anything like that. We go over all of it um, and just everything. Basically, just to give an overview, is uh, the podcast um, started when um, I was music producing for a band and I came up with the kind of slogan of concept from, from start to finish. So from the time you start writing that song to the time it's finished production and all over the radio. Um, so yeah, that's just a little bit on it. It's uh, anchor.fm um, slash 192 podcast. Um, and you can find it on everything. So so wherever you like to listen to podcasts at, make sure you look it up, 192 podcasts. And again, it's some great, interesting hearing. You can put it on your car and cruise. And the other thing you can do, is listen to us as well. You know, you can put it on your know, YouTube. Um, you can actually turn off the uh, screen and still listen to us as you cruise down the road. And maybe you'll hear something to answer a question you had in mind. And you never know. Oh, we, I found it, I found it your... on Apple podcast. There you go. You're on Apple podcast too, Billy. See, look at this. The, <laughs> the table the table is finding you even on Apple Podcasts. So there you go. So 192 Podcasts, Apple, and also on Spotify. And I'm sure probably on, the, on Google, on their podcast system, 
and probably tons of other podcasts. So if you're on a podcast system and you don't see it, find another one because it's great information, great, great uh, stuff, and a great show. He does some great uh, uh, work there with it, and it's always great to have him back here because he's one of the original people from the DJ Roundtable <laughs> from the beginning, and as well as he goes back to when we were originally on Instagram before we came to YouTube and on Twitch. So he is one of the people that uh, is, I could say, kind of a uh, a rock of the uh, of the table. You know, he's he's been there. Unfortunately, again, looking for with life and everything getting in the way. You know, you, you got he's got to do what's best for him, and he's got to work. I make money, got to pay the bills, just like the rest of us. With that said, uh, I also want to reach out to. Uh, reach out to uh, some of the other DJs with questions and want to make sure that uh, thank you guys for those questions. And we did answer for DJ Aga, uh, his question for the Serato crates. Um, we put in to the last video, a uh, little information and we did answer. And I sent a link to him that uh, Dwayne did a video on his channel that unfortunately Dwayne's not here tonight. He did a video on his channel, how to move those crates and stuff like that, and hopefully helps them out. Hey, how you doing? What's going on? And welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm glad to see you're here. A long time no see. Hopefully you're enjoying yourself also on Twitch there. Uh, and also uh, welcome, Jim. Hopefully you're enjoying yourself uh, watching the show. I want to thank you guys all for tuning in tonight and make sure you're here for the show. And again, make sure you follow here on Twitch the channel so that way you get notification. So I with all that fun stuff out of the way, let's go on with the table and answer some questions and talk a little bit about stuff uh, coming up. As some of you guys may know, DJ X is next week in Atlantic City. And I wanted to know, is anyone here going to DJ X? Anyone here going to DJ X? No? Matt, you going to DJ X? No? No, why would I go to that lame ass? Oh, sorry, lame, uh, <laughs> lame, <laughs> lame butt festival. Uh, I I don't know that a lot of guys are going to it. Um, I I would consider the the other one that they do because I'm always interested in like new photo booth stuff. Um, it's just it's so far. It's all the way on the other side. Plus, well, we have now. Yeah, you're on the west coast. Yeah, it's it looks cool. Um, uh, I'm I'm interested. See, but those like I feel like those kind of conventions are just so concentrated with djs that it's just like you can't escape it and like i i like talking to the next guy but i can only talk shop and, and everything else for so long before i just like i i need to go do something else <laughs> so um i don't know it i i'm interested to see what kind of products are being dropped because it seems like there's a couple but uh we'll find out well i, I don't know if you saw or not i guess pioneers got a new i i saw something today I, I I think it's Pioneer has a new uh, record table. Yeah, the dual platter thingy. Yeah, whatever looks, it is. I, I I just saw a couple ads for it. I have no idea other than that. Seeing a couple ads real quickly, I have not no information on it whatsoever. And I will probably have more information next time I'm on the on air. <laughs> DJ Brentley, what about you? Are you going to go to DJX? I can't. I've got too much other stuff going on. There's no way I can schedule it. Next okay. year, I'm gonna. I'm definitely going to Midwest DJs Live, and I'm probably gonna go to Marquee next year. So yeah, I want to come home for a little while, but I'm not going into the city proper. Just not feeling it. I don't. But know. yeah, yeah. I, I got I got some really pleasant emails from my mom this morning because she still lives down there, and I got a funny feeling she's gonna be moving into the house here now too. So yeah. Me going to Chicago is kind of out of the question to stay in her good graces, but I do want to go to Marquee. Well, you know, I'm out here in the Burbs, and yep. my daughter lives right by where Marquee is at, and she's a Schomburg resident, and I'm 40 minute, 30 minutes, 40 minutes south and west of there. So it's one of the things that uh, you and I can hang out and maybe uh, do a exactly. show from, from here on Tuesday, you know? <laughs> exactly. And, and you know, you have Woodfield Mall and Ikea right down the street. Bring the big van, go shopping, go to go to the marquee, and then you know spend an extra hundred bucks on gas buying stuff. You know, well, driving no, it all I back. IKEA is right behind the the, the hotel. I mean, literally, yeah. you can yeah. walk from IKEA to the hotel and back forth. And, and, and this is one of the things with uh, 
if you want a cheap lunch, you can go to Ikea, Ikea. for cheap. Ikea. They, 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 with a dollar fifty hot. It's like Costco, cheap hot dogs, but they're good. You know, it's like, you know, and they have their lunch buffet there, or their lunch stuff there too. So if you want to not eat uh, fast food, but there's a lot of great restaurants, Woodfield. Woodfield, I worked for, I worked at Woodfield uh, for a couple of different companies for years um, when I worked in the retail uh, world. And I could tell you there's a lot of great food there. Uh, they have they oh, yeah. a lot of great restaurants. Um, how, how, how are you going to go to, how are you going to go to Ikea and not get Swedish meatballs if you're getting food there? See, I'm, I'm I've already got, if I go, I, I'm probably going to spend an extra day or two down there and just show up to my gig on Thursday night at Animal House right, you know, fresh from coming from Marquee. But I have a list of things I want to do while I'm there, yeah. which may be slightly conflictory with some of the courses and whatnot at Mar uh, Marquee next year. But weighing it out, you know, Woodfield Mall, Ikea Good Eats, this, the Brazilian Steakhouse down the street from the mall. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's, there's, two, there's two of them. There's one at the mall, and there's another one not far. No, I'm going to the one away from the mall. The one it's a little there. bit cheaper, and they're a lot cooler. And there's there's not there actually a third one that's a little bit f closer to me, and it's also still in Schaumburg because Schaumburg is actually a big town. The village of Schaumburg itself is a big footprint, it's huge. as big as Naperville or Aurora, but it's a big town, and it's on the southern border, but the Roselle Schaumburg border. Uh, there's another one that's uh, kind of a hidden gem, but they're really good, and they've. I, I, Tracy and I have gone there a few times, and I, I, I'll tell you the bacon wrapped chicken breast are really, really good. I, I'm down for a night of meat sweats. I really am. You will have meat sweats. 100. You definitely will. So cool thing. How about you? Are you going to DJX? Nope. Walk yeah. there. Yeah, I'm just like DJ Brentley. Got too much stuff on my plate and. I don't live nowhere near. Oh, I know. I, I know. This is Atlantic City, and you're hundreds of miles just, away. It's like, yeah, you know, I mean, it's like a two-day car yeah. ride. Uh, Billy, yeah. I know he's a little further east of me, and he's he was shaking his head. No, he's not going to DJX. And he's actually going somewhere. He's actually probably going to work. Uh, so we're really losing, losing Billy in a little bit. So <laughs> Billy can give thumbs up and say we're number one and stuff like that, you know. <laughs> Uh, but the thing is that, you know, it's 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 one of the things that DJX, I think, you know, any show, if anyone can go to any show, if they have a show near you, I think it's a good thing to go. Not just, uh, you know, again, talk to other DJs, but it's, sometimes they release new equipment, new gear, and you get to see that and say, hey, what's going on? Hey, DJ Adrian E. Um, it's one of the things that, you know, I think it's good to have no shows. You know, here in Chicago, at Marquee, out east, they have, you know, two of them. Uh, they had the one in Boston, and then they had the one in Atlantic City. Uh, I think they have one in New York too, and of course California. You know they have they have a couple as well. So, uh, and then Vegas. Uh, so that kind of handles you know all that stuff. But I really do think that going to a show is a if you can do it, you can afford it. You have the time to do it, is a good thing because it can help you grow as a business. But if you don't want to go for the seminars. You want to see some new gear. You want to get up close to it, taste it, touch it, feel it. Uh, you know, you have all the big names there, especially uh, speaker manufacturers, gear manufacturers. But you find stuff there that, you know, like here at Marquee. Um, Rio Spin was here. And I talked about this before. And Matt's got one of these. Uh, not from Rio Spin, but from another manufacturer. Is the digital phone for the digital, uh, you know, uh, message board for people to leave messages for the couples for weddings. So you have the, the digital guest book right here. And this is something that they had here at Marquee. Um, and I was able to grab hold of it for a very low price. So it's one of the things that you find stuff like that and you hear stuff like that. And you're like, Hey, you know, I can go and, uh, and go look at stuff. Not say all the seminars, but the seminars, a lot of times they have some really great names. DJ Rachel, which has been on the show here and also on Billy's show, has uh was at Marquee. Uh, a few other people, great names, great DJs that you could, you know, talk to and ask questions and uh, learn some stuff. And it, it's it's to me, it's a great thing if you can do it, if you can swing it. It's always awesome to do. But 
If you can't, you know, again, we have businesses, we have lives, we have family, we have things going on and not everyone can fly across the country to go do it. Just like I have a wedding this Saturday and I have a wedding the following uh, Saturday and I have a couple things going on the week. Plus, you know, I, I have family. I, I got to help out with a couple things, uh, you know, and babysit a little bit. So it, it's, it's the adult stuff we have to do as adults. So, <laughs> but with that said, with not able to go to it and stuff like that, is there, um, you know, again, I know uh, Matt's gone to the show out in California uh, and it's coming back in January. Uh, they are moving it back to its normal slot. I, I know that uh, Bradley's been to a show or two. Uh, I've been to a show or two. Uh, Billy, I don't know if you've been to a show or two. I think you have. Uh, cool thing. I don't think there's really many shows down in South Carolina, North Carolina. Uh, South Carolina. And, yeah, I, yeah, I know I'm South Carolina, North Carolina. If there's anything out there, is there? No, um, I haven't checked. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it's 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 kind of it's kind of they, they go. I guess they go for like the huge major cities, you know. But yeah, it, you yeah, never know. They, right. they may have something small for your area. But like I said before, it, it's one of the things that it's great to be able to go to it, um, and have fun. But is there something we talked about last uh, last episode uh, about DJ furniture and stuff like that? And about looking for furniture. Uh, is there something else you guys are looking for? Uh, again, Pioneer just released their new, you know, turntable, which is pretty interesting and cool. Again, I, I saw a couple of pictures of it and I'm like, I'm intrigued. Is there something else you're looking for? Uh, cool thing. Is there anything you're looking for or? Not really. I got pretty much everything I need right now. I got my mixing pro, my mixer, my microphone, my Rockville rock booth, my two JBL 12 inch um, tops, and I got my speaker stand. I got pretty much everything I need. Okay. So well, I don't think you're you're, you're set. You're ready to rock and roll, uh, Bradley. Yeah, I'm ready. To rock. What about you, sir? So seeing the new turntables, yeah, uh, I've really been looking at Nest Eleven. And getting an S11 with some CDJ 3000s. Mainly because a lot of the places I'm going to, when it's plug and play, you either get the 9 or an S11. And if you have an S11, you can just drop yours in place and take their 9 out. That's cool. And most venues are cool with that. But yeah, I've been really wanting to go back to turntables. I started setting up my office upstairs from here and my, you know, my table with my gear on it. And more and more, I really want to go back to tables. But the practicality of being able to use those all the time isn't there. So obviously keep a deck, get an S11 and the tables, and probably get a couple of CDJs with it. So that's what I'm really looking And part of it's more for personal than anything else, you know, for me to play with and practice. Yeah, I was going to say, that. I was going to say those, those, Family weddings you do up there don't seem to really need too much uh, in a no. club style. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. Uh, if I could, you know, stop having to play country every other wedding, it'd be <laughs> really nice. Just I mean, me. <laughs> my my wedding on Saturday, this Saturday was, I mean, I, I think I played, had to be like 30 of the, you know, late 90s, early 2000s power pop stuff and close the night with Welcome to the Black Parade. So it was like, this is completely different. Go. I was saying I haven't played I haven't played pop punk in a while. Like I, I it's been a I've had a run of um, non pop punk weddings. Um, oh, I haven't this, even played bright side in months. It seems the wedding I had on Saturday night was like like I could have played that all night long, and even the parents would have been okay. But I I gave them a little variety, but it was definitely hitting that a lot. And then my set, my Sunday wedding was literally only thing that was working were eighties hits, like from Working on Sunshine. Uh, what else did I play? The Cure, uh, Violent Femmes, Modern English, and that sort of thing were the only things that were hitting. So I was like, "What is going on this weekend?" But yeah, I could I could definitely do with a very EDM dance wedding, right? And I think hey, you're I, uh, I, uh, adding on that too. Hey, I, 
Yeah, I I uh, I don't mean to interrupt. I know you guys are having a good conversation, but I'm sorry. I got I got to roll because I'm at my place of employment. So, well, Billy, well, thank you for stopping by. Yeah, don't be a stranger. Yep. Make sure you pop in, man. <laughs> yep, I will. I'll see you guys soon. You guys see you guys tomorrow. At work. Yep, sounds good. Later, Talk man. See you guys soon. Yep. Yeah, I got I got I got two vanilla white bread weddings this week. Well, no, I take that back. One of them's. One of them, Friday is been a very vanilla white bread wedding music, and then Saturday is uh, back to Spanish music. So I've had a little break from playing any like Latin stuff. And Thursday was all hip hop. Saturday was a wide mix, and uh, yeah. But I need I need more EDM. I got some like I've been on this big big room, huge festival style bangers after watching some of Tomorrowland, and I'm just like I want to drop these. See, that's exactly why I, you know, when I reevaluated my open dates for the fall, where I'm going to go. And because I'm booking Legends in Lacrosse, I'm going to probably wind up doing one night a month, maybe do a bi monthly. But between that, the nightclub in uh, Stevens Point, the one up in Wassa, more and more, that's where my head's been going to and wanting to be at. Granted, you know, Animal House here in Lacrosse is college party jams, which translates to weddings. But yeah, I'm really getting back in you know, like the heavier house kind of stuff, mm-hmm. and that's all I've been really mixing, even at yeah. weddings. Yeah. Speaking of EDM, that's what I'll be playing at my family's end of summer party since it's a cyberpunk theme, and just just me, me and my family. So we play a lot of EDM, gotcha. some Japanese pop, some Korean pop, some. You know what? A little bit of I was everything. Say the yeah. cool thing. I I watched your St. Patrick's Day gig log that you posted of whatever, and. Uh, you had some Ed Sheeran song there in there called Galway Girl. Um, Galway Girl, yeah, that's an yeah. Irish. I love that song. song. I've been I've been yeah. playing that on repeat. So you, you always <laughs> yeah. like that was actually always, from last year. Yeah, that he does. Year. Cool thing, I think, out of all of us, like he finds songs for the occasions really well. Like the amount of time you spend finding stuff like that, I would have. I've never heard that song before, but it's like a perfect Irish song. So <laughs> I used to. That's one I will still play at college clubs or like in my opening hour. Yeah. And is it catchy? I've, n- I've never yeah. heard it like, ever played before. <laughs> it's definitely catchy. And it's one of those songs people look like, oh, yeah, that is a good song. But it's not time for good. them to get up and dance yet. So let me get your head moving. Let me get you kind of digging what's going on and set the vibe for the night and then push forward. If I ever get to DJ on St. Patrick's Day, which. You know, doing this 13, 14 years, still never DJ on St. Patrick's Day. Maybe one day, and I'll get to play some Irish stuff. Well, here, here's something, speaking of Ed Sheeran. Um, he was actually oh, well, um, he yeah. was actually here in Chicago, and there's yeah. a place called the Wiener Circle uh, hot dog stand, uh, basically kind of Wrigleyville. It's on Clark. Um, and don't ask for a chocolate shake because, well, uh, if you... Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah, don't ask for a chocolate shake. Uh because nope. you will nope. get a I feel nope. they give you attitude when you walk in the door. If you don't know what you're at want, they will yell at you and berate you. So get prepared yep. for abuse. Um there are hot the dog. Tr- yeah, I'm not a fan yeah. for because it's a natural casing. I like a skinless hot dog. That's why I like super dog mm-hmm. better, but that's my personal preference. But I've been there uh to get stuff because I worked over there. Um, and got food from there. Uh, the burgers are decent. Their fries are good. Their right. drinks are good. Uh, yep, they hire ex felons, but it, it, that right there, they're giving people second chances, which is great. They give back to the local community. But uh, he was actually there doing hot dogs. Uh, it was on the news. Uh, he was uh, serving hot dogs to people. Now I don't think he gave a chocolate shake, but I think he gave a vanilla shake to someone because you know. Uh, again, you know what you know, and that's that's the way it is. I'm gonna leave it at that. But it, it's it's one of the things that I love seeing when you have someone who's famous like that uh, take a moment or two to go to a hole in the wall restaurant that's a local favorite, and they go there and they do stuff and they either you know they serve customers, or, but also it's for them to connect to their uh, their fans. And make fans of people who didn't know who they were. I, you know, someone walks in, I don't know who that Sharon is. Oh, it's this redheaded guy over here who, uh, who's serving hot dogs. He's from Great Britain. Oh, really? You sing? Oh, yeah. And 
you know, all of a sudden you like go, they go Googling the person's name, like, oh man, all this music, oh wow, you become new fans. So I think it's really, really cool that they, that, you know, artists go out and do that kind of stuff. And get this like a month or two ago, I went with my mom to Atlanta, Georgia to go see Duran Duran for their 40th anniversary tour with Bastille and Nile Rodgers and Chic. And man, Nile Rodgers looks exactly the same like he did back in the 70s. He hasn't changed a bit. And you rocked it out and you you had fun enjoying yourself. That's yeah. I think it's an important thing. And I think that that's an important thing for us as DJs to try to have that energy for uh for our events, It'd be it a wedding or a birthday party or uh EDM fest for uh Matt. You know, he uh he would probably love to do uh, Coachella out there in the in the desert. Uh no, oh, it's too it. hot. It's too, too hot. hot. Yeah. <laughs> it's too hot. Too hot, really? <laughs> They Ooh, said, hey, man, there. Come, come do a, a set, a three-hour set on uh, night. I uh, consider it. I mean, at Coachella on the main stage, sure. Uh, on a side stage that nobody's going to be at, no, I'll I'll pass. <laughs> well, imagine the money. Imagine, they imagine they we're paying yeah. you ten grand. I mean, sure. And I mean, money talks. Money talks. But like, you if go. you're saying, hey, hey, come play for free on the side stage in the camping area, I'd be like, no, nah, I'm good. Imagine, hey, imagine if you got to DJ in a big arena. That'd be sick. I mean, oh uh, man, that'd be awesome. <laughs> like open for open for uh see, but I'm also I'm not like an opener DJ. Like I would I would so want to play all the bangers, and I know you can't do that yeah. as an opener. So here so. here's a question for you then uh, for for Matt, and as well this will go through. I'll go through uh, Brantley as well as cool thing. Uh, if you had to choose to DJ, co-DJ with someone, um, you had to choose between, let's say, uh, David Guetta, Dead Mouse, Skrillex, or um, Tiesto, who do you uh, want to deal with? Matt? Uh, out of those? Yeah. Probably Tiesto. Tiesto. I I, I I don't like Skrillex. I don't like Skrillex's new stuff. Uh, I, but I'd probably do Tiesto. Dead Mouse is no longer relevant. Uh, I mean, if anybody though, I would do like Sam Felt, who's one of my favorite DJs. It's super like vibey, uh, or somebody like James Hype, where it's you know tech house or, um, yeah, probably one of those. Uh. Even like Afrojack, honestly, he plays such crazy stuff. Um, I don't know. There's a lot of DJs that I like. There's a lot but... of cool DJs, but those, those are, you know, those are some names right there. You know, Dead, uh, Dead Mouse. Icon. Dead Mouse still has a following, though. That's the thing. Tiesto, Tiesto, Tiesto is really eat. the hot one right now. Tiesto's like fifty something, and he still looks like he's in his late thirties. Like yeah. it's how do all the all the drugs and alcohol that well allegedly all the probably all the alcohol for sure, but like nightlife like that touring around the world constantly like i feel like that would just take a toll on on a guy that's that european uh, lifestyle i guess and then dj yeah. brent look at him he's he, he's 48 50. years old he's 48 years old looks like he's 28 years old you know oh no i'm 50 now may oh, 11th sorry, okay, was my 50. 50th but he looks like he's. I, i'm not old. advertising it but <laughs> <laughs> i mean then again here if people most people don't realize i'm 50 because you see me and it's dark where we're at you're not going to see the wrinkles in my face and all that crap. And since I shaved, you know, I went from looking like I was in my 40s, looking my, like I'm in my early 30s now. So. That's that's one reason why I keep my hair short is to keep the grays away because a little bit of grays are growing inside here. I, I don't like. And Oh, yeah. My head, my head short. It's fine. Uh, Bretley, the old guy. I, I don't know. I, I would say maybe not. You never know. Uh, but. Uh, DJ Adrian E said, you know, I'm always thinking of uh getting more sound and uh and contemplating uh, getting more sound. Um and then his pick would be uh Tiesto. And um he also says Matt kind of looks like Tiesto. I kind of get that vibe. If I get Tiesto <laughs> next to Matt, I can see that. And I, I said before uh the uh the show aired. Uh, I had my granddaughter over. I was watching one of Matt's gig logs, uh, his newest one uh, that he had uh, put up. And my granddaughter, who is seven and a half going eight, 
uh, it's like, oh, he's cute. So I'm like, you know, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, yeah, he's a good looking guy. I go, you know, he, I go, she goes, I like him. I'm like, you like him? Is it what? And she goes, I think he would be a fun DJ. I'm like, yeah, really? he's out in California. I go, he's a little distance. And she goes, do you know him? I'm like, yeah, I know him. I work with, I, I, I go, I talk to him all the time. And she was very, very like, wow, he's famous. I'm like, yeah, he is. <laughs> Unlike go, me, where I'm not famous. Unlike me, I'm not famous by any means. Where I, I wouldn't say, I, I got, yeah, I'm the DJ that everybody I, forgets about. I, I get recognized I once that. or twice at Nam. I don't know if I'm famous. I get recognized once or twice at Nam because people see my logo shirt. But yeah, nobody, none of us are. None of the DJ YouTubers, like none of us are really like DJ. You got to think of it like this. You know, you're famous when you can't get on a plane without somebody wanting an autograph or taking a picture. A lot of DJs, even Tiesto, honestly, and like everybody else, like your average person is not going to know what Tiesto looks like or Martin Garrix or any one of them. Like they're a little bit more famous, but I still think they could slide onto a plane and maybe only the young people would know what, who they are. But like you look at somebody like Ed Sheeran. Everybody knows that shit. Oh yeah, but her. if you if you They're look at famous. if you look at Tiesto, even a lot of his, you know, the videos he does have, you know, you you see in some of them, but he's, he's not a private like jet, a, but like a background character, you know his name, you know who Tiesto his stage name, Tiesto. He just, he but the thing is that him. you do you really if he was walking down the street, it would people know who he is. It's not like Keanu yeah. Reeves or someone like that who's in front of the camera all the time. Yeah, that person right there is going to be called out. But someone who is, you know, you know, one of the guys from Def Punk, you know, of course, you always get their helmets on. But if they were walking down the street, you would never know. Other than hearing a guy with a French accent, be like, oh, it's a French guy. Not knowing it's, hey, it's, one, it's one of Def Punk. Uh, yeah, let's see. Yeah. Adrian, yeah, he also said he'd be turning 49 on the 11th. Well, happy birthday. Yeah, back to that question about if I had to co-DJ with a, I guess, a famous DJ, I yep. would choose Grandmaster Flash. The OG DJ, Grandmaster Flash. He's going to be at uh, at uh, DJX, Grandmaster Flash. Ooh. Yep. He's DJing there. So, Brentley, what about you? Who who would be your uh, your wingman you would have to pick? Of those four, definitely Geta. And Geta? Yeah. I mean, of everything he does, and, and it definitely plays in my you know upbringing in Chicago. He doesn't have more of his tracks are you know falling around one twenty five to one thirty, not super heavy, boom boom. But it's all got that smooth kind of vibe going to it. Like, and, and even the stuff he's putting out now, the nineties remakes that I actually decided to drop some of the real versions and no one noticed the difference over last week. I thought it was really funny, actually, that everyone was screaming so loud over what was playing that, like, what did I play? Uh, I played the Fat Boy Slim Praise in you, and no one really caught on to it. So, but if I had, you know, like, dream producer to go, you know, be on a bill with or would be loud luxury as of late, they're way up there for me. But I'm definitely into that very smooth, like, I mean, if you look at, you know, like Ralphie Rosario, DJ Heather out of Chicago, their sets are all, I mean, there's no big, you know, drops, no big, it's all one good dance set. And granted, yeah, I've been, you know, doing the dance clubs more and more around here, which, you know, requires those drops and you have to play EDM. But yeah, if I were to have one of those, it'd be definitively one of those two. Those are definitely are in my favorite category. College girls do love loud luxury. Oh, geez, they ever. I mean, even in the co even yeah. in the animal house where it's not a dance club, and I don't really lean into a lot of dance music. Loud luxury is on my. It will at least come up once a weekend in my playlist. They're like the new. They're like the new. They're like the chain smokers of 2023. Like yeah, when the chain yeah. smokers were popular in 20, you know, 15 and 14 with closer and. Uh, yeah, roses and all that. Like it's the same kind of like rhythmic, like minimal drop, but enough. And two kind of guys that are, you know, super that age that just found the right niche. I like their music a lot. I play body yeah. at, at a lot of weddings, and it always goes off. 
I, I will play that at weddings. I mean, I not I, okay. I play loud more than I actually think about it because I will open up uh, a lot of my set time just playing around with uh, "I'm Not All Right" just because Bryce mine is it. I mean, it's a yeah. good just okay. Let's test the sound, but not really push it. Here, how you know without overdoing anything. It's, it's a really clean way to kick things off. Mm-hmm. Did I just hear a tricorder? Uh, that's my phone. I have the tricorder. So yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm that kind of nerd. Well, which is a bigger nerd? The one who recognizes what it is or the one who has it on their phone? Yeah, okay, we're in a tie here. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I like my sci-fi stuff. I don't even but, know what uh, tricorder is. <laughs> Star, uh, Star, Star Trek. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, the old flip tricorder sound. The and then when they got original. to the next generation, it was on the chest thingy. Yeah. On the community um, Yeah, I watch way too much of it. Yeah. But, you know, it, it is very interesting when you look at stuff like, you know, again, uh, these DJs who are putting stuff out now. And, again, uh, what's working on the dance floor, especially chain smokers, especially you get someone in their 20s right now on a dance floor, and also you drop a chain smoker hit. Uh, during like now you're on the dance floor, even at, like during cocktail, I get people turn around and go, "Oh wow, chain smokers!" and they start like grooving to it very heavily. And it's it's you know the the BPM is kind of low, so you may want you know kind of throw as a throw off song, but people will hear it and like, "Oh wow, yeah," it gets them in the mood. And then later on, you may drop like a bigger chain a chain smoker song. Uh, the one thing is like selfie. That's one song I think they kind of fell flat on. Yes. That, that right there. See, I'll play closer, and that because I play closer a lot the college bar scene, and I'll follow it up with MKTO classic. I'm not trying to push a real big dance beat yet, but I'm trying to get you all get them in the start singing along. Let's start bopping a little, but I'm not pushing you yet. I want you to get a few more drinks in you and make the bar money. Then once you've done that, let's get you up a little bit. But that's those are two songs that are really in my opening sets. And with Closer, I will never play it under 100 BPM. I always push it up. And my one of my DJ friends laughed at me the other day. He's like, you play everything 5 to 10 BPM faster, don't you? I'm like, pretty much. <laughs> I'm going on mobile. DJ yep. so I'm going on mobile. Yeah, he's got to <coughs> go somewhere. So he's going to be hopping over to his phone. Hopping into his uh, into his Tahoe and cruising somewhere. So maybe he's going in and out burger. <laughs> Probably. Oh, I'd be jealous. No. I'd be jealous. <laughs> California. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm going out to California first week of January next year. See my family. Take the kid. I have a list of eateries. Yeah. In and out burger. I always want to try them. I know they're. Uh, I want to. I know they're in Colorado. I want to say Denver area. They're they're slowly going east. Uh, they're uh, one of the things. And again, this is good off detail, <coughs> but I know they're a big thing in quality, and they they like to have quality. And they want to have their facilities where they produce the meat not far from the restaurants. And it's kind of the thing that going back to DJing, we as DJ should be doing is make sure we have good quality on what we're producing. And again, having that five to ten BPM higher for certain songs, then the, the standard norm can work in certain areas for certain vibes. And, you know, changing stuff around make and sure doing the, stuff. Make sure the pitch, yeah. And make sure the pitch lock is on, because when you do 5 to 10 BPM higher, it will change the, the uh, pitch. See, in record box, I have mine set, or if I don't want it to sync up or do it supposed to, you know, stay locked, I have to disable. Because I do so much of you know, bumping up BPMs and things like that. I have it locked all the time. Well, unless you want to do it on purpose, you know, unless you want to have the sound, like, let, let's mm-hmm. talk Bee Gees. Do Night Fever. If you ramped it up, you know, 5 BPM, you really can't tell the difference between 5 BPM and the 110 BPM it's at of him singing because he's such a high pitch. It doesn't sound much different between you know one or the other so it's certain songs you don't need to worry about you need to listen know the song this is knowing music and knowing what the song is about and what how the song sounds but some songs actually sound better the artist sounds better 
a little higher pitch. So you're actually not you're helping out the song, you're helping out him. And I cannot tell you time I mean, Tracy hears a song, she goes, wait a second here. Uh, that sounds too slow. They're like, nope, that's what it's supposed to be. It's right. At, I'm not adding anything, taking anything. I go, you've heard it at a higher BPM. Oh, really? I'm like, yeah. I don't because make, you, don't make it sound like, you, you don't want to make it sound like chipmunks. No, you don't want to sound like chipmunks. You don't want to sound like, you know, you know, it, it, it sounds bad. You know, yeah, that's just, yeah. But, you know, maybe that's you want to want to sound like chipmunks or take the chipmunks and slow way down and have them sound like normal people doing uh, during Christmas time and uh, make it when people at a bar and they hear chipmunks, you know, singing. And obviously you start slowing it down or drinking or like, oh, I had one too many drinks. <laughs> it's like you like at like imagine a kid's party and you're playing peaches and you bring it up higher or lower, like up higher to where it actually sounds like Jack Black's real voice. <coughs> There you go. There you go. And, you know, here, here's a funny thing here uh, for uh, DJ Brentley. The next time he has a uh, uh, a uh, situation at one of his uh, bars or at one of his weddings, uh, put in Ballroom Blitz. Ballroom go, Blitz. <laughs> ballroom Blitz. Just put that on there and just let them yeah. rock it out. <laughs> I mean, I like that song. If you want to know how geeked out about you know geeked up with that song is, I have the version by the punk band Di that was on Rat Music for Rat uh, People Volume Three that was released on Haunted Town Records out of Chicago in the eighties. I have a few different versions of it, but that's my favorite one. Yeah, there's 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 always that's always a good song to you really want to get people going. That's you don't want <laughs> again you don't want a situation, but the thing is, if you want people on the dance floor and they kind of have that kind of punky kind of feel to it. You throw that in there, people hear that, and they, oh, they yeah. get ramped up. It's like jump around. Like there are certain songs, and people yeah. who know it, they get really ramped up on, it and they have fun with it. Uh, you don't want again trouble breaking out, but you do want to be make sure you have the energy on stuff. Yeah. And that's why again, that's why Brentley decides, you know, on some songs to, to bump it up a little bit, give a little more energy to stuff because yep. some songs need that help. They're good songs. Like, I little... still, I like playing Usher's. Yeah, at one ten. I really do. Just a little bit more kick to it. But also, it can, it can backfire, too, because people get, are used to the original version, and they're like, wait a second here, this is, there's something off about it. So that, that's... It's, yeah, that's it's, like... It's, I, like, uh, my friend uh, DJ Envision, like, he's guilty of that, where he'll just, like, forget to change the BPM back after a transition, and I'm like, that's the first thing I do is slow it back down to the original speed. Like, I, I, I don't know. I know some DJs that do that. Like, I think Nick Spinelli does that too, where it's just like the same BPM no matter what. And people want to hear it at like the, the right tempo. They don't want to hear a sped up version, especially like Nick does a lot of, not Spinelli, the other Nick, Envision, does a lot of high school events. And they're all like, they're kids. They, they don't, they don't want to hear it at a the tempo that's not the right one. So I don't know. I mean, a song that sounds really good sped up is Bloody Mary because they're so used to that on TikTok. Yeah, like those those sped up versions are are good. Like uh, Cupid by the 5050 Cupid song. That one, this like the slow version is terrible, but the sped up one that they did for TikTok is way better. So some of those are better, but I, I sure. like yeah a little faster too. I think it's a little a little slow. Yeah, and again, it, it's all you got to read in your crowd and looking at your crowd and saying, hey, you know what works, what doesn't work. Mm-hmm. And that that to me is always the important thing is that you know, as a DJ, is understanding who's in front of you, know your crowd, know what's going on, and reading the dance floor. Because a lot of times you can put a song on, and the dance floor doesn't like it, and it, it clears like the Mojave Desert. And other times you put a song on, you think it's going to bomb, and people are like out there jamming to it. That, that's you know, you start go, oh, okay, you like this, what about that? Here Saturday when you just you just brought the perfect my the couple hours for Saturday, Rock Lobster from the B fifty twos. Oh yeah! And here's what the, here was the kick. One play it very early, so like second or third song in, and part two play the long version. All seven minutes of it and big enough. Yeah. I got it on vinyl. <laughs> but yeah, that was. 
that was the song that, I mean, we were doing well already because it was like Shania Twain was uh, Man, I Feel Like a Woman was supposed to be the opener. I think I went, I, I played that, you know, cold, cold start, cold stop game for a few songs and went to Rock Lobster and that was it. For the rest of the night, except for a few moments, there were a hundred and plus people crammed on my dance floor. So I was really happy with that. But Rock Lobster was the song. The other one was it uh was it Barry Manilow's Sunrise or something or Sun something? I, I can't remember what I was at a barn about two hours north of here, and nothing was I mean, I was dropping every country banger and every top forty banger I could think of. I put Barry on and the whole floor packs. So I'm like, what? I, I was just in awe. Like I'd never could picture Barry Manilow doing that. Did you put Maddie on? No, no. You, you sure did. They that. had that one, but they were also this couple also wanted a lot of polka that night, in addition to Barry. And once I got the groove, okay, play some of the '70s rock like a uh, uh, magic from a. Uh, you know, oh, it's magic, you know. There was that and some cars. of those bubblegum pop songs. And then I played a lot of polka. That wedding didn't last very long because the two brothers got into it. And, well, alcohol. Beer and even the sheriff that. that was there was watching them fight. He, and the sheriff's exact words were, no, nah, let, them, let them burn it out a little bit. Uh, they're brothers. What do you imagine playing this? I remember that tour when they came through Chicago. If you if you start playing Master of Puppets, oh man, especially because of Stranger Things. <laughs> yep, my daughter even knows that. Well, Stranger Things is good. You're uh, it's, you're oh, you're yeah. desynced again, uh, Brentley. I'm what? You're desynced. Okay. Your, vo your, your voice is way ahead of your video. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it happens once in a while. You got to love technology. <laughs> oh, man. But, you know, it, 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 it's it's one of the things, again, reading a dance floor, understanding what's going on, what's happening. I feel that's very, very, very important. And if you're, if you're doing stuff, you want to make sure it is – the right feeling getting what, what Brentley had right into it. again. He's trying some stuff, wasn't working. Also throws on a old eighties tune. Boom. The dance floor is packed and people are happy. So it, it, it's, again, it's, it's watching what's happening and seeing what works and maybe throwing something out there. You're not used to, you know, and seeing, is this the magic bullet that gets everything, you know, is this the catalyst that starts everything. And that's, that's one of the things you got to look at. So, uh, Matt, I got to ask you, since you're uh, in yeah. a, a mall or in a store? Albertsons. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're in a food store. Uh, you pick up dinner? Uh, yeah, I'm uh, cooking burgers for the family tonight. Oh, I thought you were going to go right and those, uh, get one of those uh, rotisserie chickens. Oh, come <laughs> on. I'm, be I'm better than that. Oh, they're they're I don't know about Albertsons, I know, but I can delicious. tell you the ones here. <laughs> I know they're delicious. They're delicious. I know that they're you good. Can't go wrong for uh, five bucks. You know, it's like five bucks is, whole chicken. That is true. They're tasty. You know, that's true. Yeah. But uh, what are we gonna have? Is there is there have you had a wedding? Uh, I don't know, a gig log or if you don't have any gig log, uh, a wedding or event lately that you had a. Uh, Hard dance floor, then you decided to throw something on there, see if it, if it worked, and you threw it on there. You're pleasantly surprised, and it started working. People were dancing, having fun. Uh, I mean, I don't post anything where the dance floor wasn't super lit. So, <laughs> um, uh, I've had a couple where, like, even just like last weekend, I had some, and just nothing like they just weren't, neither day was a super dancey crowd. They both just, they weren't, they just weren't. <laughs> big dancing uh, one of them it was a smaller wedding there was only 40 people and they were all you know they were more focused on the bar and staying outside and then the one after that the very next day you know i i had some people dance at the beginning but then it was just it, it just never took off and i think it's a mixture of uh a kind of a crammed timeline where it's also like the like bride and groom if they're not out on the dance floor and their people aren't dancers 
it's going to be hard to build a crowd because like other people will be out there if your bride and groom are out there. But if it's not the case, yeah, the same, thing, yeah. The same but, thing happened to me at my cousin's wedding a couple of years ago. We had some dancers. We had it was they were just a little on and off. They were doing the bar. They were going outside. Yeah. So know, and, and and like when yeah. when people like when people like Jay Brandon say you know it's not like a, a a sign of a good wedding isn't a packed dance floor. It is to me. Like, if you don't have a dance floor, like, I feel like I failed that couple. Like, the dancing is why they hired the DJ. They didn't hire the DJ to play music for cocktail hour and ceremony. Like, they want a party. And if you can't give them a party, or for some reason they're not dancing, like, me personally, I take that as a failure. So, uh, I take but it for you. I've, I've had weddings. Personally, but like, I, I've, I've had yeah. weddings, Matt, that, you know, people... You, I don't have a lot of dancing, but the people were like, "This was the best wedding. I love the music." Oh. They were they were just want they, they wanted they, they felt they they were treating it more like it was a bar than it was a a dance floor. And it just happens once in a while, and I, I understand why 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 he says that. I again, it's happened to me, and I've gotten five star reviews on on the knot on Wedding Wire and Google from those weddings. And yeah, I feel like you. I feel kind of a, a failure. Then the bride and groom are like, no, this was the best wedding I've ever been to because you played everything I wanted. I, I love the music. I love the mix. My my cousins, my aunt, my uncle, my brother, sister, my friends are all like, wow, this was this was awesome. We had some great tunes. We're sitting there and, and enjoying ourselves. And that's that sometimes is what it, what it is what it is. And sometimes, it you know, you feel it's a loss and it's a win. What what the uh, wait wait what bird right. are you getting there? I'm trying to decide. Should I do brisket chuck and short rib tri tip, uh, brisket beef patties or wagyu beef patties? Uh, I would say the mix. The first the one you showed. Brisket chuck and short rib. Yep. Brisket chuck easy, and though. short rib. That right there is can get. It's a little firmer of a bite. Make sure you do a, a medium at the most, but that will give you a nice good burger and nice flavor. All right, fair enough. If you're a well done person, then you know do all uh, all chuck. But if you want to do uh, you know something that you can do medium, you know a nice flavor on it, do do the mix. Trust the fat guy. All right. <laughs> Look at this, guys. You got any got DJ yeah, information? I, I, he goes to get. You also get cooking information. What the heck, you know? I, oh. I like if if they yeah I've, I've had that too where I thought that like I did a bad not that I did a bad job but the dance floor wasn't full but they still gave me a five star review and, and everything was great and awesome and I didn't even ask for a review because I was like uh, I didn't think that it deserved one but some people yeah some people just aren't dancers and they just you know they want you to be there to take care of formalities and entertain their guests and if people dance great if not they don't really care too much either way but like that's the thing is our marketing is targeted to couples that want to dance so like that's our whole the jewish word is called shtick that's our whole shtick of like we're gonna pack that dance floor and have everybody getting down the whole night so if we don't do that then i'm like well we we failed i feel the same way about that 100 percent so it doesn't, it doesn't you're, you're in sync now. You're, you're good. You're in sync now. <laughs> I don't. I don't feel that way at all because at my cousin's wedding a couple of years ago, I didn't think I failed. I mean, I. They, she said I did a good job, and you know, she said I did a good job. It's it's it, it's weird because sometimes you get weddings. Again, I've had weddings that I have maybe five or six people out there dancing, having fun. Everybody else is is sitting, sitting there chilling, eating, drinking. Talking to people, laughing at the bar. I I was wedding last year. The bar area, I could I, I could see the bar on the other end of the room was packed with like 30, 40 people. The chair, the tables around there were just packed with people. I had five or six people on the dance floor. The bride and groom, like this, is exactly what I wanted. But again, it, it's 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 it, you're trying to read the floor. You're trying to throw stuff out there, see what works. I was playing stuff they wanted, and people were like. There were, I had requests. I had tons of requests going through the request, and people were not dancing. And it's like Tracy comes up and she goes, she goes, I know you're dying. She goes, You're you're you you do not look happy. I'm like, Yeah, because people are not dancing. And I I want I want people to dance, but 
it's also one of the things that, you know, are we doing a good job? And at the end of the night, when the bride and groom would come up to me going, oh my God, this was awesome. People were are talking about how much fun they had. And, you know, they're they're not drunk. It's not like they were just sitting there, you know, drinking, you know, Jaeger right out of the bottle, right, you know, all night. They are having drinks, but having fun. And they're over there talking and enjoying themselves. It's a win. That's what you got to take it as a win, you know? And then, you know, I know uh, Brentley up in Wisconsin, he's he runs into that too. I think it's a more, I, I think it's not a Midwest thing, maybe, and maybe a Southern thing because, you know, a cool thing was saying, Hunter was saying that uh, he's got, he's had a couple of events like that. People are not up there dancing, but they're having fun, enjoying themselves. And Hunter, yeah, it's like I did, yeah, it's like I DJ that Latin festival. No one was dancing, but they were having fun. They were going to play like soccer or getting some food and just hanging out. That's that's why I said match you like go to Coachella or something like that, or uh, one of the EDM festivals and people are jumping up and down the whole time. He would fit in perfect. He would love that. Not you everywhere know. is like an EDM <laughs> festival. Word to DJ Solstice, not everywhere is like an EDM festival. Not no, everywhere. Again, it, that's what he that's what he wants. He wants it, that's his that's his marketing. That's it, that's his stick. Uh, that's what I want. <laughs> I want to. I want. I want to make it a rave, no matter well, where I'm at. You're not going to get that. Not I mean, a you know, festival. I'll agree with that. I mean, if you're, and I mean, for every gig I'm at, be it a wedding, be it a club, I want you screaming, I want you jumping, I want you dancing. It doesn't have to be in any particular order, but on my dance floor, at some point, I want to see all of that. And yeah, you're right. There's a. There are weddings that it's not going to happen, but they want a soundtrack behind them so they can sit, hang out with their family, their friends. And I never, and this took me a long time to really be able to deal with that fact that you're not going to crush every wedding. And when I did this really total family wedding and there was no dancing, but they were all commiserating and doing their thing. It was, I I really started to understand that, that you're going to have some weddings that won't, And I see I'm out of phase again. It's my internet up here today. <laughs> but here's the thing: even if you get that that you're that that you're have a wedding that again people are not dancing all the time. You have a few people dancing, but people are having fun at the bar area, or all of a sudden they set up beer pong. I've had that break out of a wedding beer pong, and people are, you know people are like having fun. It's like. It's, it's almost like a frat party or, you know, it's it's like a, you know, a college party kind of atmosphere. People are like, you, you get some people dancing, but you get people off to the side doing stuff. And they're like, it's, 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 they're having fun. They're grooving to it. They're enjoying it. They're singing along and stuff like that. But they may, may not be dancing. They may be sitting there, you know, five, five or six people in different areas, total singing and dancing off to the side, doing, doing their little shuffle, doing whatever. And they're like, it's, it's like with, yeah. yeah, it's like, with, yeah, it's like with car shows because I did, I did a car show for the Down Syndrome Society, and they were just looking at cars, having fun while I play music. There was hardly I mean, anyone dancing. This is one of the things I always, I always like to see is during dinner and cocktail hours, people chair dancing, people you know sitting down having a drink, but they're kind of like grooving in a chair because you know I feel it oh, helps with the dance floor. But I've had people do that all night long. They're grooving. They're enjoying themselves. I can see them. And it's not one person. It's like two people there, three people there, a group of you know friends there, a couple of girls, a couple of guys. And they're they're grooving to the music. They're having fun. They're getting the beat. And they're they're like singing along and stuff. And all of a sudden they go, they, oh, this is awesome. I, I had fun. And sometimes that's that's still a win. If, if any any way I look at it this way, if the couple is happy. You know, when I do a wedding, they are happy. The client is happy. They loved it. That to me is a win. You know, uh, it, it's not a question of do was a dance floor packed all night. Yeah, I like to see a packed dance floor. I like to see my bride and groom on the dance floor. But the thing is that at the end, of, again, at the end of everything, did they enjoy it? Did they have fun? Are they, you know, happy? That's why I want. You know, and that's, 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 it's a hard thing to do, but you know, that's what you can do. Wow. We've already been through an hour already and we're talking about burgers and we're talking about fast food and we're talking about DJ stuff tonight and Matt, well, unfortunately you guys won't be able to see Matt uh, 
make burgers tonight be Chef Matt. I'm trying to get, get cheese now. There you go. Come on. And then, you know, it, it's, I keep seeing, I see a flasher so often saying my internet's a little slow. I understand I shouldn't be, but whatever. I'm at the mercy of the web like everyone else is. So with that said, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. If you haven't done so already, smash the like button. Make sure you follow the channel. Make sure you follow these guys on social media. Don't forget the podcast from DJ Billy and DJ Brantley with his gig logs where he wears a cape in some of them. You got to catch it just right. He has that picture with the the, the, the scrim, mm -hmm. looks like a cape. I, you know, I'm sorry, bro. I love you, but, you know, you got it. <laughs> it's like, it looks perfect. It looked good yeah. on you, though. <laughs> It's, it's he, he's super DJ. It's not a bad thing, but again, yeah. you get a chance to make sure you follow cool thing on his channel. If you haven't done so already, links are down below. So, you know, cool thing. He's a bunch of subscribers. He, he's gets channel back up and running hundred percent. He's got a bunch of gig logs. He's got a gig coming up. Gig log going to be coming for his next event, which is a family party. So uh, make sure you keep, there you go. Make sure you stay tuned for that. Other than that, guys, I appreciate it.